Haas Business School. The Entrepreneurship Forum, we're talking about the sharing economy. I think the whole, the whole idea of sharing um, underlines and goes throughout our, our whole relationship with society and people and, and companies and structures and that it has a really powerful effect on how we relate to each other and the possibilities on how we organize as a world. A lot of people don't have uh, much money to buy new things and so there are new models emerging that are either recycling or sharing things that uh, are underutilized. So it's a great way to optimize the usage of the things that we have. <laughs> For example, uh, if people have an ideal car, right? So they can share their car with their friends. Or if people have a, a, a space in their home and they want to share that space in their home with their friends, they can share that. So using technology, people are sharing these excess resources. So, and this is creating the sharing economy where people transact with each other and people buy and sell from each other. So that, that's, the, that's the core of sharing economy. The sharing economy is a gathering of all sorts of companies, organizations, community organizations, nonprofits, and governments interested in making our resources used much more efficiently. Is asking whether the very old idea of sharing can be brought into the new idea of e-commerce, entrepreneurship, uh, and all sorts of wonderful ideas by bringing those two things together. So last century, I, I refer to last century as the century of the generals. General Motors, General Dynamics, General Mills, General Electric. It was top down, don't worry, we have it handled, pretty much do what we'll, we'll tell you. This century, the 21st century, is organized around very different themes, different tools, has a different pace, different expectations. Much of this, at least the first half of this century, is organized around sharing. Now, sharing isn't really new to us. We share public parks, public spaces, public art. We share transportation, uh, pubs, places to talk, cafes. <laughs> Infrastructure, please don't tell my insurance company I took this picture. <laughs> it's a theme basically, as, as I sum it up, that we're moving from, an, uh, from a kind of orientation and a way of looking at the world uh, where we were very organized around ownership, we're moving to one in which access to goods, services, and talent triumphs over the ownership of them. Gosh, I'll, um, you know, important for society, this is a, you know, so it gets us into a space, instead of just working on making items a little bit better, right, or a little bit even less bad, this is um, not, you know, it's, for society, this is the single best supply chain, which is not needing a supply chain. Right, so it allows us from a footprint standpoint and from the natural resources to, to eliminate the need for that. From a community standpoint, to connect with people through the things that we need and things that we're done with. And from an economic perspective, you know, Yertle has aspirations and a model that will save the average family twice what a Walmart could. Right, so it's got a massive financial savings. Yeah, there, there are multiple reasons why this is good for society. The first reason is people get engaged and people form a stronger, stronger uh, relationships among themselves. So that's the first good thing, when people are form forming stronger bonds among themselves. The second thing is on the uh, ecology. I mean, when we use less, we are putting less pressure on the uh, ecology, so it's a greener environment. And the third thing is, I mean, we would have a, a, a good feeling about sharing to other people. Well, I mean, humanity uses something like 60 billion tons of natural resources every year just to support our culture, and that's just not possible to continue. So by sharing, we can greatly reduce the number of, of things that we each individually have, but increase our happiness in using many, many more things. I'm a big fan of Airbnb, but my favorite is Lyft. I live in San Francisco, and so that's probably one of the main ways I get around um, day to day if I'm commuting I take Muni or BART but um, on weekends with friends or things like that I always take Lyft and I'm actually a Lyft driver too so it's really fun and I've met a lot of fun people that way and interesting conversations about life and 
all sorts of things. It's totally different than a taxi. Technology is helping a lot in the sharing economy because it makes it accessible to everyone. So you don't have to put in as much legwork. You can do it in your own time. You can look online after hours. You don't have to only go between like Goodwill store hours. But it makes it easy for you and it makes it fun. It almost um, gamifies it. So you're earning points. So it makes it almost like a challenge as opposed to just a task. Technology allows um, something that's a very, it's, we're wired for this as humans, right? But it's a very old behavior. And technology allows that to scale. So before where somebody might have come through my home and they might have said, oh, that's a keyboard. I'm looking for a keyboard for my daughter to take piano lessons. And I've said, oh, take, take this. I'm done with it. Right? That, that happened. It was happenstance. And what can happen now with technology is that information that I'm done with the keyboard can be everywhere. And so technology allows an existing behavior to um, really achieve scale and to affect, um, to continue on that path. We're not going backward. We're moving forward. Uh um, I think that there's a lot of really successful entrepreneurs. Like, I considered myself to be a successful entrepreneur and a failed environmentalist. Um, and for me, the sharing economy is the opportunity to, to actually think about environmentalism 3.0 as in, in terms of actually how do we bring, uh, you know, a sensible uh, strategy connected into a capitalist model because telling people to use less doesn't work. So I was in Belo Horizonte last week, and you know, I mean, everything from sharing lanes, the new BRT, bus rapid transit that's going right through the center is sharing the roads and finding a different way to ideas like, you know, Belo Horizonte, which is a, obviously a town in Brazil, has, uh, has a complete ban on plastic bags. And that again is saying there's a way we can use shared resources so everyone carries a canvas bag instead. So the ideas aren't just in Silicon Valley or San Francisco or New York or Seattle. They're all over the world. And our challenge is to kind of value them wherever they are and bring them together, as opposed to sort of say, this is, this is something that you need to have an iPhone application to do. I, think it's, uh, I don't think that this is a one, I think this trend is, um, is a human, right? I think sharing is something that's very human. And I've yet to meet the person that doesn't look for better ways to get the things that they need. Um, there are definitely different cultures that will adopt this in their own way. Every culture will adopt it in their own ways. But, um, you know, in Yertle 1, we were on the internet. It was on uh, Facebook, and we had a great contingency in, um, in Rio. We had a great contingency in Istanbul. We had a good group in Tuscany in Italy. So, um, you know, this is like we've seen. It's, um, it's, a very broad, it's a very broad value proposition that will apply to everybody um, in culturally unique ways that we'll be excited to see. I'm, I'm very optimistic about where the sharing economy is heading. This idea that was sort of fringe as a business concept just a few years ago is now becoming very real. And there's major companies with multi-billion dollar valuations like Airbnb and Zipcar uh, that have been born out of this concept that we can make our things not have to sit and wait, sit in our closets or sit in our driveways or have empty rooms sit by. We can actually make those things work. At this, we launched our first what we called Yertle 1.0 on the web a year ago, I and mean, basically a year ago Black Friday, so this will be our one year anniversary. And you know what we're seeing, and we just basically seven weeks ago launched what we call Yertle 2.0, which is an iPhone-based app, and we're building the, kind of the web component of it now. And we're seeing the numbers way up in terms of participation. We're seeing a 300% increase in the number of people who are coming on, liking items, wanting items, and getting items. We're seeing a direct line to people who like items, want items, get items, to what they actually go and post. So we're seeing a really clear movement towards reciprocity in the sense that if you want something, you get something, you'll very quickly see that person turn around and post a lot of things back to the community. And it's, I mean, it's not surprising, right? This is how our lives work, and humans are actually wired for this type of behavior. But to your point, I mean, this hasn't, we haven't seen this type of interaction in retail, in former retail. But when you look at the facts, I mean, it's just kind of, Obvious, right? right. So yeah. self-storage has gone up by a thousand percent in the United States in the last 30 years. Uh, what happened here tonight is we had a, a wild and crazy conversation about how the world is changing and we're moving away from an orientation towards owning things and buying many more things to one in which we step back a little bit and realize that we have access to um, incredible experiences and things uh, that we can actually share in a, in a sort of um, poetic way of using the word share, but that we have the ability to uh, move to a world in which access trumps ownership. I think what they're doing and how tonight affected me is it's just showing me that there is a demand for this, that we are all on the same page. 
people are thinking along the same terms, at least the ones who are aware of what's going on. The people who are just buying into consumer culture and capitalism aren't there yet, but that's probably why Yertle is brilliant in that it's making it appealing enough for that audience that doesn't have this mindset already.